So here's a tip, some of you cheap asses won't take me up on it, but I'm just gonna be real. Rekey your house. Do a final walkthrough before you actually go to closing. Go over the numbers before closing. Take the whole day off of work. For goodness sake, you are buying a house. Here's a bonus tip most realtors don't even know. But whenever you go to write up your offer, make sure that you're not closing on a Friday. Because if you do, guess what? Something, a hiccup happens, you've gotta wait all the way through the weekend to be able to get to back to closing table. Well, we all know that you're planning on painting and moving furniture and having everybody over as a housewarming party on that Saturday. Well, guess what? You can't do it because you don't own that property anymore. I know we want to move, but we don't plan on moving on closing day. I know that there's that time frame in between the two of them, but if you plan on closing day, you are planning for a disaster. I can promise you. Have your stuff loaded up in the truck, ready to go, but don't have movers sitting out there waiting because you don't know how long it's gonna take to close the property. Again, if anything goes wrong, um, here in Davidson County, we had a ransomware filed on the Register Deeds Office. Everything shut down. You couldn't close the property for three days. Now that doesn't happen very often, but to those clients who had the moving truck sitting there and the moving men, guess who was on the hook for the money? They were. Don't bring a personal check or cash to closing. Attorneys aren't gonna accept it. You know, we can't take your drug money and deposit it into the bank. We can't accept a personal check of $50,000 and think that everything's gonna be good to go and go ahead and close it. If you bring a personal check or cash, it's not gonna close that day. It needs to be a certified check or bank wire. If you're wiring your money, make sure you've confirmed that wiring information with the attorney. There's a lot of scams going out there of wire fraud. Somebody happened in Greensboro. The lady lost $250,000 because she wired the money to the wrong person. So make sure you take certified checks and wire information is confirmed with the attorney over the phone is what we always do this is an easy one look at your license like literally pull it out right now don't bring an expired license to closing it will not be able to close because a notary cannot notarize any of that paperwork with an expired license If you are married, I don't care if you've been separated for three, four years, if they're in prison, whatever it is, they're gonna have to sign some kind of paperwork or they're gonna get some of your property. At least in North Carolina, it takes one to buy and two to sell. I'm sorry. Even if you're going through a nasty divorce, your realtor should explain this to you beforehand, but don't expect an attorney to turn a blind eye. We've got the prom project coming up. If you've never been out there, this is the third year that we've been able to do this. We give away prom dresses to any girl who is going to prom. What do we got going on with those? On March the 5th will be the Lexington prom project. Uh, it'll be here at the Main Street office. It is 202 North Main Street where it's going to be held. The following week, we'll actually have one in High Point. It is uh, March 12th, again from 9 to 2, and that will be at the Movement Mortgage Office, which is at 4035 Premier Drive, Suite 111 in High Point. So where can you drop off prom dresses? You can drop off prom dresses at the Mantle Welcome Office. Um, because somebody is always there because I work too much. Um, also, you can drop it off at Creative Image, which is at 6 uh, National Highway in High Point. Uh, or you can drop it off at the Mantle Summerfield office. So what can you drop off? New or gently used prom dresses, jewelry, also shoes, accessories. You know, bring them on. We'll let them girls go through that stuff and sift through it and make them feel special and whatnot. So if you want to be involved with this, you want to volunteer, reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to let you jump in and do whatever we can do uh, to make sure that these girls have an awesome prime night.
We see people celebrate all the time of closing. Sometimes they celebrate by quitting their job. I kid you not, they'll quit their job, they're gonna go start something new. Well, guess what? They have this thing called verification of employment. You need to stay with your job at least through the closing day. Just because you went from one job, you quit it and started something else, don't think that your lender's gonna be okay with it. You need to confirm, hey, I'm thinking about changing from this job to this job. I don't care if it's the same field. You need to confirm that information before you quit your job or you might not be closing your loan. Speaking of jobs, don't change the type of pay that you get. Don't change from regular base pay salary to commission. Your lender will not like it. You will be back sitting at square one and not being able to close on that property. For the love of God, don't go celebrate your closing before your closing with a new car, new furniture, new TVs, whatever. We don't want anything new because your debt to income ratio matters off of that. Your lender can check that right before the closing because we hear it all the time. Oh, we're celebrating our new house. We just bought two new TVs on our Best Buy credit card. Well, guess what? I hope that TV is really nice because it's gonna be sitting in your apartment for another six months until you change your debt to income ratio back. Yes, they will check that stuff right before closing. If you are on the border, you might not be closing on that house. So lastly, with all this stuff that's going on, here's a great thing just to think as a whole. Don't plan on getting the keys on closing day. Just don't. Us agents need to be able to hold the keys and say, this is not your property yet. We will give them to you as soon as it closes. All the way through. And by closing, I don't mean that you went and signed the paper. I mean the phone call from your agent, the attorney saying, congratulations, the property's yours. Don't do a thing. You shouldn't have the key to the property until after it closes. If you do get them, don't go in the property. Your insurance isn't covering you yet. Their insurance is being lapsed. So then you're gonna have a big fight whenever somebody falls down the steps moving your furniture. Me personally, our company, we don't hand over keys until after the settlement, closing, recording of title, everything is done because we don't want anything to happen to our clients on either side, sellers or buyers. We're here to protect you guys. Hey guys, it's Dustin over here at Mantle. Thanks for coming out to our YouTube channel. Uh, we're just here to help our clients find out a little bit more do's and don'ts, uh, tips and tricks, whether it's for yourself or somebody else you know. Um, let us know what you want to hear, and we'll be glad to make content on it.